Hi to everybody. My name is Bibi Aguerrevere. I went to THI in 2006. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Anne, for the invitation. And I'm here to talk about the Latin American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion. I'm going to share some slides here. First, I wanted to say hi to my colleagues, the class of 2006-07. Hi to Rashid, that is still working at THI. And to talk a little bit about the um, Board Latin American of, perfu of Cardiovascular Perfusion, first of all, we have to start talking or speaking about what is a LAP, which is the Latin American Perfusion Association. It was born in 2014, and by now it has approximately 1,100 members. So we're talking about a whole continent. So what we did with was like we um, sectorized it by regions. That's how we got organized in the perfusion committee. There are approximately a thousand perfusionists through whole Latin America. 700 of these perfusionists are from Brazil. Brazil makes a huge part of Latin America and it, it's, it has to be said that they have been well organized as a perfusion community and they are added to this whole movement and to also to the board. To speak a little bit about the high, the hallmarks and, and personalities in Latin, from Latin America and in the cardiac surgery field, we can talk about Dr. René Favaloro, father of the cabbage surgery, Dr. Castañeda of pediatric surgery, Adit Jeten from Brazil, which um, described the, um, the switch, arterial switch or Jeten surgery. Maria Elena Sosa was uh, um, uh, perfusionist uh, uh, hallmark in Brazil. Tyron David is a doctor who is from Brazil, and Pedro Del Nido who works in um, Boston Children's Hospital. He is from Chile. So there are a lot of um, great personalities in Latin America that has uh, ha had a positive impact in the perfusion and also as well in the cardiovascular surgery um, community. So we decided to organize our profession after a lab, gather all the perfusionists and formalize our um, profession as you Americans did with the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusions. So our, um, we're gonna be called PCC instead of CCP because of the Spanish um, configuration of the language, okay? So um, what about um, what was going on in the world? So we have the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion. We have the European, we know we have the Indian, Australian, et cetera. This is how we communicate with the Latin American perfusion community. We talked to them, we went to meetings through, through whole Latin America, um, telling, telling them how it was done uh, previously in other um, countries, okay? The first two, we got huge collaboration from them, specifically, specifically from the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion. Here, we can see in our first meeting in Bogota, Colombia, we can see a member, it was the director of the board by then, Ed Delany. Uh, we are very thankful with Ed because he um, gave us a lot of, um, how, like um, guides how to put together this huge program. The other person who is next to him is Carlos Garcia. He's the president of um, um, Spanish Perfusion Society. And uh, he helped us very much to get together this project as well. So they kind of set up our standards and uh, we didn't invented anything in this project. We we're just following steps from the European and most likely from the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion. Um, after that meeting, Ed in, uh, started inviting us to the liaison panel uh, at the annual uh, meeting in, from the board, which is most likely sometimes it's in NAMSEC or in the American Academy. So I've been going to those meetings and um, we have been provided with informational support from the ABCP which it has been um, of a lot of help for us, not only through the um, logistical um, 
uh, point of view, but also for credibility. So from our community, we're not talking about just only one country, it's all, uh, a whole continent. So they, they, we needed them to believe in us. Uh, who were we? Why do we want to create the American Board of Cardio, the Latin American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion? So um, to see that the um, ABCP provide us help in how to put together these steps and the European Board as well has helped us enormously through this process. So we had to explain what the board was to everybody through the continent. We established, we said and maintained that as, as, uh, the board is established and maintained the highest standards in the field of cardiovascular perfusion. We established the concept, we focused the concept in quality and standards. We introduced the steps and uh, also we talked about the requirements for jobs specific for every country. In Brazil, we, they speak a, a different language from, from the rest of Latin America, which is, which is Spanish. So there was a lot of questions if this was going to change their jobs or their salaries. So we have, I'm gonna explain it further, a few drawbacks um, in terms of what was the board had to and what had to do with um um for example the the jobs the, the the requirements for the jobs we explained this the steps same as the americans step one certification step two recertification and we got brazil by endorsement through um an endorsement that we signed in 2019. They have a board already, but they were interested in having the Latin American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion as well. So by endorsement, all of those Brazilians who have the Brazilian board will have the Latin American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion. We establish um, a joint or a board and uh, where Ed, we, um, uh, ask him to be at the beginning of the um, foundation of the project as um, external external um, liaison. And uh, he has always um, given us informational support on how to get this process going along. So we understood that uh, this project was going to be successful if we mixed all the, and balance the board with the members of all of the countries. So that's what we did. As I was telling you, we, we had a drew, uh, few drawbacks. Uh, we were following steps of the Americans and the Europeans, but you did it in the, the 80s, the 60s, the 70s. Uh, where there was no internet and by now, you just say something and boom, it's everywhere. It's in one second, it went everywhere to Colombia, to Argentina. And they, what we got, we got fear. We got um, comments if this was gonna impact on their salaries. Some people said it was unfair because they, they went to a profusion school and why uh, we were taking those who were on the job trained. And um, most of them were not convinced some of them had economical problems to sit for the boards and pay for the boards, for the platform for the boards. So we, um, we, we had a few drawbacks. I had to call Ed a few times and tell him uh, that this was impossible. And um, he said that, Bibi, if it's just 20, just go ahead with 20. And, um, and he was right. And the board, the American board was right. And giving, giving us some, you know, lights on, uh, this is a process that once it starts, it's, there's no way back. It's always um, in, uh, in, an improvement in the, um, in the profession and people will start convincing on their own and as time, time passes by. So we created a web page. We also have an app, an application for cal perfusion calculations, uh, VO2, DO2, and um, you can upload your documents and, um, and the app. So we combine the app and the process of, um, of how to um, give your credit or send your credentials 
to sit on for the board. So um, for the um, what was the we're gonna we were going to evaluate in the um, in the test are the same topics of of the core of the curriculum of the profusion schools in the states. We asked we gave them uh, support through um, our YouTube channel where we have recorded all of our. Uh, different uh, symposiums and uh, and um, and conferences, so they can uh, have it for for study. We created a, a blog, um, and every Monday at seven p.m. we had classes, informal classes, and um, at the beginning they were like twenty people connected, but then they were massive, like 100 and 160 every Monday. And at the end, we we gave uh, 10 questions and they will stay up to whatever the, the uh, that meeting lasted just for the questions. It was very excited. So it has generated a sense of um, uh, partnership and uh, it has been really interesting on how can you just uh, putting up um, a topic and say, uh, today we're gonna talk about myocardial protection and uh, how this little blog that we created, uh, it made it interactive. So people started talking. So those that had fear started convincing that this was investing on your own nothing else but your own career and and your future we also have a journal that, which is called on pump and uh, it was given for them for them like a, you can study also from from the journal uh, the test is not going to be uh, for brazilian perfusionists so we decided to structure the test in two steps. Step one, basic science of perfusion, and step two, um, clinical activity of perfusion, most likely like the American board as well. And uh, we divided, it's, uh, it's gonna be online and um, it's already, the test is uh, there. It's gonna be in two phases and it's gonna be first, in one date in, in Maine and the other date in, in September. Uh, for two years, we're gonna be including all of the perfusionists from the community, from the Latin American community, even though if they were on the job train or had an informal training, or if they came from an, a perfusion school. So this is only gonna be for two years. After 2023, you have to be graduated from uh, an accredited school or at school with university uh, program. Okay, so at the end, when the perfusionists are certified, we're gonna have two types of certification because due to the huge community of Brazilians perfusionists, we decide them the, for the Latin America, we're gonna call them PCC uh, for the Spanish, uh, acronym of Certified Cl Clinical Perfusionist. And uh, for Brazilians, they're going to be called CPC. So it's going to be most likely like a form or a way to distinguish if it was by endorsement or if that person sat for the Latin American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion. For the recertification program, it's a huge um, and, uh, project and that it's coming after this um, certification. And uh, it's basically what um, the Americans um, have as recertification that is in two steps. Step one, every year, 40 clinical cases uh, with, with uh, specific um, features that you can be assistant or you can, uh, be seating for us, cell saver only for two cases, et cetera. And we added, there was a huge um, concern about not making or not being able uh, to do the 40 cases, you know, the pandemics and some places, the economical um, status, they, they don't have, uh, they, they, don't, they don't make 40 cases per year. So we are launching 
to uh, a program that is a platform for to do 20 cases in a virtual simulation platform only for cases. And uh, this way we can go ahead with the process because the, either other ways it was to drop the cases down to 20. So this is a way to make sure that the person has either, either 20 cases um, pumped or 20 cases done in a simulator of a real uh, clinical cases where the, he has to make decisions of what to do. And we also have the step two, which is every three years. And uh, we be um, related about the educational CEUs. And uh, it's basically the same. We have categories, category one, two, and three, 45 every each year. So um, uh, to finish, I wanted to tell you about the profusion schools accredited actually by uh, the Latin American Profusion Society. We don't have the, the commission of Allied Health um, Committee as, as you Americans have, but so far, ALAP, it's um, like the organ who accredits which um, profusion school uh, has the program that ALAP um, uh, says is the, is the correct program. So basically, um, right now, it's the profusion school, which is a master's program. I'm the director of that program. It's in, in Dominican Republic, and it's uh, in a cardiovascular center. And it has uh, the university, um, it's called Nacional Pedro Enrique Ureña. It's the university who gives, um, you know, the, the certification. And the other one is INCOR in Brazil, which is a certificate. This is this are my, my students. And uh, as I was telling you, I went to Texas Hard. I told Debbie in a meeting that um, um, and I had to tell her that I use the profusion evaluation sheet that I got in Texas Heart. So I translate into Spanish. This is um, uh, what we use in the profusion school. They have to pump 80 cases. It's a two, two year program. And uh, we have had students from Panama, from Ecuador, from Peru, and from locally from Dominican Republic. Thank you very much. I wanted to thank uh, Texas Heart, specific, specifically uh, all of my teachers, uh, but most likely Terry Crane for me was a person who marked my life as a perfusionist. And when I went back to Venezuela, I was um, scared. I didn't know how was, was uh, to, um, I was going to do as a perfusionist. I ended up moving to Dominican Republic. I live, I have lived um, here for eight years and uh, well, life gave me the opportunity to start a master's program here in perfusion. And I really have to say that it's inspired in Texas Heart. I wanted to invite you all to our second um, Latin American Profusion Conference, which is going to be in September 16 and 18 in Costa Rica. It's a very good pro uh, program and very well prepared. It's um, going to be in a coffee uh, place, um, in a coffee, um, how do you say, like, like um like a farm, like a coffee farm, like very with a COVID, you know, protections. So it's going to be this year, you're all invited. And uh, also, I want to let you know about our journal, which is called On Pump. And uh, we make publications every four, four times every year. Thank you very much for the invitation again. And thanks always for being there for us. Uh, so we can guide our steps in this huge program and this project called the Latin American of Perfusion. Uh, thank you very much to all. Thanks for the invitation. Bye-bye.